when the world sees you, they see Jesus. And when we see Jesus, we see the Father. This is your reason for coming to church. This is your reason for being born of God. This is your reason for being equipped. This is your reason for being edified to become like Jesus. There is a shifting in the body and the true in the true body of Christ. There is a shifting. You're in the last days right now. As we've said before, the father is allowing his spirit to wake up, wake up, wake up the body because the world needs to see Christ Jesus. They may not see him in the pages of the Bible but they will see him through your life and through your actions. They need to see a living, breathing Jesus. Let me say that again. They need to see a living, breathing Jesus. That's part of the Father's goal for your life, that you would grow up into your full sonship, that you would grow up into the true heirs of salvation. Let's start here just for a moment in the book of Ephesians, Ephesians, the fourth chapter, Ephesians four. Let me show you this. We're going to get right to it today. Ephesians, the fourth chapter. Let me show you in this. Let me show you the purpose of church, the purpose of church. Now, there has to be a mentality shift. And those of you that are watching us online, hear us. There has to be. Or listening there has to be a mentality shift as it concerns church for years it has been the goal of many people just to get to church if I can only get to church I need to go to church and they say come come let us go to church let us go to church and that has been the goal once you've gotten to church then the next step was well let me get Jesus in my life so that I can go to heaven I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit so I want to go to church I have what I have to do let me get to church let me get Jesus in my life let me get filled with the Holy Spirit so that I know that I can get to heaven it has been the goal of many in the body of Christ to get to heaven. That's the goal, right? To get to heaven. I want to go to heaven. Now understand now, while that is a wonderful goal, it is really an add on. It's a part of your inheritance. If you're born of God, you have eternal life, you're going to heaven. Glory to God. If you have a living spirit, that is, if you're born of God, that, that is, if you have been twice born, born again, you are now a living spirit, and all living spirits go to the place of the living when you die. Are you hearing? All living spirits go to the place of the living. Now, dead spirits... Go to the place of the dead. Those human beings that have not been regenerated, that have not been born for the second time, twice born. Now, I'm not talking about reincarnation. Hallelujah. There's no such thing as reincarnation. The Bible says very true. It says it is appointed unto man to die once. Then after that, the judgment. But for those human beings that have not been born again, born the second time, born from above, if they have not been regenerated, then they are a dead spirit. They have been, they are dead spiritually and they will go into the place of the dead. Living things go to where the living go. Dead things go to where the dead go. So if you are in fact born of God, you have a born again spirit. You have been twice born, regenerated. You are now a new species of being. You will go to the place of the living. Glory to God. That is a fact. So, but the enemy has crafted this deception where we are so, where many in the body have been so wrapped up to going to heaven that we no longer pursue heaven in the earth. 
and our goal in the earth. If our focus is only to get there, we'll lose our focus of things that are here. There are so many people right now at this very moment that are dying and going to hell because our focus is there. I can't wait until I get to heaven. Then I won't have any more sorrows. I won't have any more suffering. I won't have any more depression. When I get there, I won't need this and I won't need that. But God said you can have that here and now. This is why Jesus told us to pray in the model prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Where? On earth, in earth as it is in heaven. The Lord says that you are meant to be an overcomer. An overcomer. If our focus is always when I get there, you'll never overcome here. As a matter of fact, you will be overcome here. Heaven is an add-on. It's where you're going. It's where all living spirits go. Dead spirits can't go to the place of the living. And the living don't go to the place of the dead. This is why Abraham said to the rich man, uh, rich man said, uh, Abraham, would you send Lazarus over here? Send Lazarus so he can just dip his finger in the water and, and, and cool my tongue for it's hot in this place. He said, no, we can't pass from you. We can't pass from here to there because there's a big gulf between us. There's a place of the living and there's a place of the dead and you can't cross over. But if our focus is mainly there, I'm going, I got to get to church so I can get there. I got to get born again. I got to get saved so I can get there. I got to be filled with the Holy Spirit so I can get there. You're going to miss what's happening here, what the Spirit is doing here. Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4. Look at verse number 11. We're going to just walk this through just for a few minutes. A few minutes. Ephesians 4 verse 1 says, rather verse 11, Ephesians 4 verse 11 of the King James says this, talking about Jesus. And he gave some what? Apostles and some what? Prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. Why? Why did Jesus give what we call the fivefold ministry? Why is church in session? Why is church in session? Before we answer that question, church is not here for entertainment. It's not here for feel good. It is here to, we see number verse 12, it says what? For the perfecting of the saints, say one. Church exists for what? The perfecting of the saints. Secondly, what? For the work of the ministry. What? For the edifying of the body of Christ. Look at these three things for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. The word perfecting there means equipping, equipping, equipping for the equipping of the saints. The word perfecting there also means to completely furnish you. Completely furnish you, equip you, and fully furnish you. You know, you can go to church every Sunday, but never be equipped and fully furnished. But you can have a good time. Just because they call it a church does not mean it is one authorized by Christ because when Jesus sets a pastor there, when he sets a teacher there, when he sets an apostle, when he sets a prophet there, when he sets an evangelist there, their goal, the one that Jesus has sent, the first thing is to furnish you, to equip you. That is add something to you. Perfecting also talks about maturing. You should be maturing. Oh, my goodness, I cannot stand to hear saints say, you know, after they've been in church for a number of years, they still they have these tempers and things. And they say, oh, well, you know how I am. You know, you know me, you know how I am. Haven't you been perfected yet? Haven't you been matured yet? There's something wrong in that picture. Are you hearing 
The fivefold ministry is number one for the perfecting of the saints. That is the equipping of the saints. Secondly, for the what? The work of the ministry. Ministry is work. Ministry is work. Another word for the word work or definition for the word work is employment. It talks about assignment, something that God himself uniquely positions you into a place to do. The pastors don't give you assignment. God gives you assignment. And then God equips them, gives them things to give to you so that you can be fully furnished so that you can do the work of ministry. But if we can go to church week after week, month after month, year after year and not working, something's wrong. Oh, you're hearing all of us have an assignment. Now, this is very important because Jesus will look at you one day and you will want him to say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. That is, you had something to do. You had a work. You had an assignment. You were employed in a position in the kingdom of God. We've got it. We can't sit around just doing nothing. There's something that God has called us all to do. Are you hearing me, saints of God? Are you hearing? So the Lord said that church is here. The fivefold ministry is here for number one, the perfecting of the saints or the equipping of the saints secondly for the work of the ministry for your employment and your assignment everybody got it regardless of your age everybody has it everybody has a specific duty that God has called us to do something he's called you to do turn to your name and say he's talking about you thirdly for the edifying of the body of Christ the word edifying means to build up, build up. It means to continually grow, continually grow wider, taller, build. You've seen buildings built one piece, add another piece, this stud or, or that brick or that piece of sheetrock. It is a, it is a, an edifice. It's a building. Something is being built over time. So when you are in church or when you are receiving the ministry of the fivefold ministry, when you're receiving the work, number one, you should be being equipped or perfected. Secondly, you should be in your assignment that equipping you for your assignment. Thirdly, you should be getting built up, built up. But one thing about expectation, if you don't have it, you won't receive it. If we think that church is where I wear my fancy clothes and people look at me and it's where I go meet friends or maybe where I go and pick somebody up to take home with me or whatever people do. If that's what it has become, then those are the individuals that will not survive in these last days. Are you hearing? Pressures will come. Pressures will come. Whether you're in Christ or out of Christ, pressures will come. The rains will come and the winds will blow and the floods will, floods will beat on the house. But those that are built, those lives that are built upon the firm foundation of Christ will stand. Let me give you a testimony before we go any further. Y'all stay with me today. I'm a pastor. The Lord has called me to do many things in ministry, many things in ministry. Just because you are operating in your call does not mean that you will not see storms. Hallelujah. I've told some of you about the, some of the difficult storms I had been weathering, and I did not know why then, but as I see some of the fruit beginning to rise up, I begin to understand now. Sometimes the, the threatenings or the tauntings of the enemy, the torments of the enemy are coming your way to prevent you from receiving something. And the greater the resistance you have, the greater the torment, the greater the onslaught of pressure, 
the greater the reward on the other side. Some things that you would never have noticed, never have known would happen to you. And so my wife and I have been just really battling this battle, getting our, our home repaired, just battling this battle. And a number of things have been happening, a number of things have been going on, but I'll tell you about this one. One particular night we were at home there, asleep, and I think my wife was originally uh, woke up and then she woke me up. She probably couldn't have, I'm sure I didn't hear it over my snoring, but she woke me up and there was a drip, 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 drip. A roof was leaking right there in our bedroom. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. But you're the man of God. How is it possible that your roof would trip? And so I had an opportunity right there. The devil gave me an opportunity, really. He gave me an opportunity to whine, mealy mouth, and complain. How much is this going to cost? You got an opportunity. What are you going to do? So my wife noticed it, and of course she tells me, and she goes on back to sleep. Oh, one day I'm going to have the faith of that woman there. <laughs> but I'm up, Sister Wendy, I'm up. Lord, okay, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Being the man, my first thought is, Lord, she's depending on me to get this fixed. She's depending on me to take care of this. What am I going to do? And in the meanwhile, some things had happened for us financially that I hadn't received a salary check in about two months. Lord, what are we going to do? You got us. You supplied all of our needs. And I'm declaring his word. I'm declaring this word. But where's the money? But I'm declaring his word. I'm declaring his word. I'm proclaiming this word. But where's the money? I'm proclaiming this word. And now this comes. And then there were some physical challenges within my body, Ralph. Lord, what's happening? What's happening? The wind is blowing on all sides, financially and physically. And now this. As I stood there, she's resting so peacefully. And I'm calling on the name of the Lord. A spirit whispered to me so peacefully. And I realized this wasn't a time for whining and complaining. This was a time for praise. I said, what? Because the word was, all of this will be over soon. This too will pass. But what you do in the middle of it defines who and what you are. I say, yes, Lord. So I began to praise him as the drips were coming down. Drip, drip. It formed a beat. Drip, drip. Praise the Lord. Drip, drip. Thank you, Jesus. Drip, drip. My God is faithful. Drip, drip. He is my provider. Drip, 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 drip. I'll praise you, Jesus. I took an opportunity to praise him in the middle of the battle. It was an opportunity. Every drip was an opportunity to praise him. Every drip was an opportunity to give him glory and to give him honor and to declare right there in the midst of hell, my God is faithful. Glory to God right there in the face of the adversary who has put so much effort into tearing me down, so much effort into shutting him up. But in the middle of it, my God is faithful. The next day I said, okay, I got to get up on that roof. I got to get that fixed. Praise God, get up on that roof. I saw the steagalls. They said, what you doing? I got this ladder. I'm about to get up on my roof. I got some things. I know I can fix this. Get up on the roof. That next night, it's raining. All right, no problem. Later on that night, trip, 
Trip, trip, trip, trip. Oh, Jesus, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God, Lord. Hallelujah. This time is the praise, Ralph, was, wasn't as strong as it was the first time. Wasn't as strong as it was, Denise. Wasn't, it wasn't as strong. I noticed that. My lovely wife. Oh, she's still sleeping. The faith of the woman of God. So as I'm hearing this and I, I go and grab my bucket, Tasha, I go and grab my bucket and I put it right there where the water's coming down. Lord, I, I did all that I knew to do. I know I got to call somebody to get this going. And when they come, they're going to want some money. Lord, what do you want me to do? It's still raining. I had the thought, it's around 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning, around 2 o'clock in the morning. I know what to do. I'll go back up there now. In the rain. I was about to go get my ladder. And I'll fix this. Thank God for a wife with wisdom. No, you not. The man wants to fix. I will fix. She said, honey, just go back to sleep. We'll deal with this. Oh, the faith of my wife. So she goes immediately back to sleep. But I'm still hearing drip, 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 drip. And that praise begins to ring up in my spirit again. But then I hear the voice of the Holy Spirit again, so sweet and clear. He says, speak to it. I said, yes, I'll speak to it. So I rise up in my bed and I said, rain, I command you right now in Jesus name to stop raining over my house. Clouds go away. And a few minutes after that, it stopped raining. And a few minutes after that, it stopped dripping. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. I thought, well, that's one way of fixing the roof. No rain, no water, no drip. Praise the one for the name of Jesus. But why am I saying all of that? I'm saying that because trip situations will come. Winds will blow. Floods will happen. And usually when hell is knocking at your door and everything is all around you, you're being tested from every single area of your life. On the other side of that testing is promotion, is increase. There is a reason why it's pressing in on you. Are you hearing? Sometimes the answer is to praise your way through. And sometimes the answer is to speak to it. Speak to it. Use the authority that he has given to you and speak to it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, Pastor, it just stopped raining. What a big coincidence, don't you think? No. When you hear a preceding word from the Lord and you do what he says, you'll have his results. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. Verse 12 says again, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, you should be getting built up. Troubles and situations should not rock your world and destroy you. You should be stronger now. Are you hearing? Stronger now. 
Verse 13. Understand this. Let me say this one again, one more time. Verse 12. For the perfecting church is here. The fivefold ministry is here. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Verse 13. What's that first word in 13? Till. Till. Till means there's a stopping point. There's a time when this will no longer be available or no longer be needed. Church is teal. It is teal. The church age will come to an end. It is teal. Now, if you're being built up, you're being uh, you're being equipped. You're being um, you're in your work of ministry. You that is you're employed. You're in your assignment, and you're being built up into a strong spiritual house. That is, you've gone through the training of the spirit. Till comes. Now, when is the stopping point of church? It tells you here. It says till we all come in. Number one, what? The unity of the faith, number one. Until we all come in the unity of the faith. Now, now, that is the work of the spirit. You understand that, right? Until we all come of the unity of the faith. Secondly, of the knowledge of the son of God. Until we all come into the unity of the faith. Until we all come into the knowledge of the son of God. Until we all learn who Jesus is and what he came to do and present to us. Number one, church is till we come into the unity of faith, the unified faith of who Jesus is. The unified faith of who Jesus is. Secondly, and to the knowledge of what he came to do. And to the knowledge of the Son of God. Unto. Now the word unto mean leading to. These two things lead to. That is the Unified faith and the knowledge of the Son of God leads you to something. Well, what is it leading us to? A perfect man, that is to a matured man, matured woman, matured body. We are mature unto. What is this unto? What is, what is this leading us to? Unto the what? The measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. In short, church is meant to lead you to becoming exactly like Jesus. That's the goal. That your life should be a perfect reflection of Jesus. A perfect reflection of Jesus. Jesus said, if you've seen me, Thomas, if you've seen me, boys, you've seen the Father. By the same token, it will be and it is when the world sees you, they see Jesus. And when we see Jesus, we see the father. This is your reason for coming to church. This is your reason for being born of God. This is your reason for being equipped. This is your reason for being edified to become like Jesus, to speak to the wind, to speak to the storm, to praise your way through, to prophesy, to be as Christ in the earth today, not just to represent Christ, but to represent him to the world today day hallelujah they may never see a bible but they will see you you will be a perfect representation of jesus in the world today casting out devils and demons laying hands on the sick and seeing them recover you will be toward you will be as god to them i didn't say you will be a god to them but as Jesus spoke for the Father, as the Spirit of God spoke through Jesus, you will allow the Spirit to speak through you. The same way which we use Moses. Moses, um, the Lord told um, Moses that he said, you will be to Pharaoh as a God. That is, I'm going to put my words in your mouth and you're going to speak them. You're going to say what I say. And situations will bow. You're going to say, let my people go. And those things will bow. 
You understand you're never meant to be below the circumstances or under the circumstances. You're meant to be well above. Praise God Almighty. Church is teal. It is teal. It is teal. That is the, the meaning or the reason you come to church once again is not just to hear the choir. It's not just to dress up and let everybody see what you're doing. It's not just to get there so that you can feel better. The meaning of church is to equip you so that you can become like him. And you don't stop striving until your life becomes like him, the perfect model, the perfect man, Jesus. Glory to the Lamb of God. So church is more than just about coming and getting in children's ministry or men's ministry or women's ministry. If all of that helps me to become like him, I'm in. I'm in. Hallelujah. Verse 14 says that we henceforth be no more children. You see this? That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. So weak, so immature, so weak, so immature. Now, while that is fine in the very beginning, we understand that. But after 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years of being in a church, you're still carried about by every wind of doctrine. You still need somebody to help you pay your light bill. You still need somebody. Oh, please pray for me. I understand. I understand that even that we'll all have moments of weakness, but that should not be all the time. We'll always need somebody to pray with us. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The apostles said pray with us. Even the Lord Jesus told the disciples, pray with me, tarry with me for one hour. So there's never going to be a day that you won't need somebody else's help. But it's that continual asking for the same thing for year after year. I haven't seen you in 15 years and you're still singing the same old song. The same, you're in the same old place, the same old position. Nothing's changed. No victory. Still whining and complaining, still jelly back. You're still in the same place. Something is wrong. There should be some growth and some maturity. Well, how can we get to that growth and maturity? I'm glad you asked. I'm so glad that you asked. We'll get to it. Let's go on further down. It says, verse 14, that we henceforth be no more children. Say, no more children. That no is that we be no more immature. We got to grow up. You mean to tell me you've been in church 20 years? You're still asking, Baba, Baba, give my bottle, Baba, 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 Baba. Are you still drinking from a sippy cup? That's what we're doing spiritually, right? Still drinking from a sippy cup? Still, still asking, Baba. Still wanting somebody else to feed you at the table. He open your mouth. Here it comes. Sooner or later, you got to learn how to get your own fork in your knife and you got to cut up your meat yourself and you eat. You eat just not on Sunday morning, but you eat on Monday and you eat on Tuesday and you get in your word and you learn the voice of the Spirit. You hear what I'm saying to you? Verse 14 says again, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro. Children are tossed to and fro. Right? And carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Thank you. But verse 15, but speaking the truth in love may do what? Come on, help me out. May do what? May grow up where? Into him in all things. 
which is ahead, even Christ. You're growing up into him. The process is growing up into him. The goal of being saved is not just to go to heaven. The goal of being saved is to be a devil runner, a devil stomper, to be an overcomer, to bring heaven to earth, to look like Jesus. And don't you know that when Jesus comes, when, when, uh, when the millennial reign of Christ comes and, and the Lord reigns upon the earth for a thousand years, don't you know who's going to be serving with him? Matured sons of God, matured children of God will be serving with him. Matured sons of God will reign with him. You don't hand keys to the immature. The Lord's given you the opportunity to grow up into him. Grow up into him. Say with me, I must grow up into him, which is ahead, even Christ. Verse 16, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and uh, compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh, inter maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Simply put, everybody, when everybody does their part, we're all edified and we all grow. But here's the devil telling you, you ought not go to church you have a part, I have a part. Now you're telling me, don't bring my parts together. You just be a big old toe out there somewhere. You be a part of the knee out there somewhere else. No, the body has to come together. And when your part, when you do your part and I do my part, it edifies us. When you heard Trophina earlier, when she was in uh, Sam's and she was prophesying in Sam's. That was her doing her part and it was edifying other parts. Whether you sing, whether you write, whether you do poetry, whether you're a cook, when you do your part, your God-given assignment, it edifies me. We edify each other as we each do our parts. What's your part? I don't know. How much time have you given to figure it out? That's the problem. Are you hearing me? We got to get this thing together. Let's go down to um, uh, Ephesians, same chapter, same book, um, verse 22, Ephesians 4, 22, and we begin to close out here. So you have been born again. You've definitely been saved. You say, I know Jesus. Now I know him. I know him. I know him. I know Jesus. That is you. Your spirit man has been transformed. You are now a new creature in Christ. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. You're a new creature in Christ. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now you are a new born again believer. You are a new species of being God created. You new in Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. You have now enrolled in school. But you can't stop in kindergarten. Are you hearing? God's looking for matured sons, matured daughters who will grow, who will take up their place of authority and walk in power. Walk in power. How am I going to do that? Ephesians 4, 2 and 2 says that you put off the former, rather that you put off concerning the former conversation the old man. One more time. That ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. And do what? And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. That you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying. Speaking every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Verse 27, neither give place to the devil. 
Verse 23 says again, you have to be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Now, we're going to stop on this point. Lord willing, we'll take it up again on next week. Now that you're born again, what has changed? Your spirit is new. Remember, you are a spiritual being. You live in a body in this meat suit. And you possess a soul. You are a spirit. You live in a body and you possess a soul. Now, that spirit, the part of you, the real part of you, your spirit has been perfected in the image of Christ. When the devil looks at you spiritually, he sees Jesus and he's hoping that you never figure that out. You look like him spiritually. Your spirit man looks exactly like him. But your body has not changed. Neither has your soul. Your soul is made up once again of your will, your mind, your will, your intellect, your emotions. This must be renewed. This is the spirit of your mind. The spirit of your mind is in your soul. The spirit of the mind is the conscience and the subconscious. The spirit of your mind is your conscious and your subconscious. This must be renewed. This must be transformed. So it's like you're a brand new spiritual being looking like God. The Holy Spirit resides in your spirit. You are a powerhouse, but you're still carrying around a meat suit. And your soul is your command center. Because your soul is where your ego is to your will. You can decide whether you're going to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit or not. You can decide whether you will follow the promptings of the Spirit as the Spirit leads your human spirit. You can decide whether you will follow the promptings spiritually or follow your flesh. It is your soul that must be renewed. It is your soul that must be restored. It is your soul that must find rest. So the spirit is brand new. But your soul must be transformed. Because all the power of heaven is in your, is in your spirit. The spirit of God, the greater is he who is within you than he that is in the world. The spirit resides in your spirit. All the resources of heaven are in you, are in your spirit. But your soul can still turn it down. The devil will give you many opportunities. Oh, to, to, to side in with what you see. To side in with, to side in with your flesh. The world around you. It's raining. Trip. Chip, chip, chip. Here's an opportunity. Oh, God, you have forsaken me. Oh, oh, you have forsaken me. Deciding with the soul, or will you give your will over to the spirit and hear his voice? Will you believe that God is a provider even when you haven't gotten paid? That's siding with the spirit, with what he said. Instead of what you see, your soul is your command center. Even Jesus had a soul, has a soul. How do we know that? Because in the garden of Gethsemane, he said, Father, if it's your, if it's your will, remember the, the will is the is seat of the soul. If it is your will, Father, let this cup pass from me, but nevertheless not my will will but let your will be done so he was perfectly submitted his soul was perfectly submitted to the will of the father to the will of the spirit his soul was not submitted to his flesh or he would have said this stuff is over his soul was perfectly submitted to the will of the spirit and that's what the father wants for us to be perfectly submitted to the will of the spirit. But it has to happen through your transformed soul by the renewing of your mind, by the renewing of your conscience, by the renewing of your subconscious. Because the way you think will govern the way you act and the way you act governs your entire destiny on this planet. Don't you realize that when you entertain negative thoughts, 
when you entertain negative thoughts, it affects you physically. Your brain releases chemicals in your body and, ref and, and it reflects your thinking. If you're thinking negatively, you're thinking depressive thoughts all the time, then cortisol, along with many other chemicals, are being released in your bloodstream. And then your body begins to re react, react. You begin to feel tired and, and irritable. And it has very horrible effects on your systems. But when you think... Things that are pure, things that are lovely, when you think things that are of a, a good report, it's releasing other chemicals in your brain that makes you feel good and happy, and it's, and it's lowering your blood pressure. It's doing great things to, to your digestive system. It is helping you because your mind must be renewed. And the devil knows that if he can get your mind in a spiral, you will kill yourself. If you side with his thinking, you will hurt yourself. All he's got to do is get the ball rolling. This is why the Bible declares, and we'll, we'll see this later, my goodness. You have to become the master of your mind. An untrained mind is the trash can of the world. Let me say that again. An untrained mind is the trash can of the world, which means that when the devil comes and offers you a thought, if you don't have an untrained mind, your mind will immediately begin to think that thought and it will bring trash into your thinking and then releasing uh, bad chemicals in your mind and the, uh, rather in your brain and your body begins to feel bad all because you could not resist a thought. You must train your thinking. You must train your mind. How can I train the mind? How can I train my mind? One of the ways that you would train your mind is by simply single thought meditation. Single thought meditation. That is, I'm going to choose. I'm going to make myself think of this one thought or one word, maybe for 30 seconds or to a minute. Or two minutes, as long as you can go. Maybe that thought is, Jesus saves me. Jesus saves me. Or I am whole in Christ. Or I am the righteousness of Christ. And you're going to hold that thought in your, in your mind. You're going to hold that thought. I am the righteousness of Christ. You're going to hold that thought. Now you understand the first moment you try to hold that thought, here come, there will come other competing thoughts. You say, I am the righteousness of Christ. What you need for dinner tonight? I am the righteousness of Christ. What is he thinking about you? I am the righteousness of Christ. I wonder what Becky's saying. I am the righteousness of Christ. You're going to pull yourself back. Nope, not going to think about that. Pulling it back. I am the righteousness of Christ. Pulling it back. Every time you pull your thoughts back, you are training your mind. You are saying to your mind, I'm the master of this body and I give it over to Christ Jesus and I declare what I will think. And as you become proficient in training your mind, when the devil comes offering you other thoughts, you'll say, I'm not going to think that. Because you have a well-trained mind. But if you neglect to train your mind to meditate on on the word of God to meditate to get in his word and we're going to see this to get in his word and let your thoughts go toward his word let your thoughts go toward different verses and you say God tell me what this means and and you're meditating on what he said along with single meditation now you may only do a single single thought meditation one time a day or twice a day Sometimes when if I'm just sitting in a parking lot waiting my wife is inside the grocery store because I, I don't like going to the grocery store I don't like to go shopping either. Mm -mm. Is that, that where I pass you wear the same pair, same pair of pants every day in the same shirt? Yep. I got five pair of pants. They're the same color, same shirt. I wear that too. Praise God, and I'm fine. That's just how I'm built. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Trophina said, bless you that you can do that. Bless you bless you but see that's how I'm built that's how I'm built 
I don't want to take the time to think about what I'm aware. I see it, I'm putting it on, and I'm out the door. I don't want to take because I have too many other things to think about and consider that day. And I don't want to be wrapped up in my closet looking around what I'm a, what I'm a, mm, what I'm, mm, mm. Now, if I got to go somewhere special, then I'll take the time and say, I'm going to put this suit on, I'm going to wear that tie, I'm going to do something. And then I'll do that. But see, that's how I'm built. I'm not telling you to do that. That's how I'm built. And I understand that about me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. That's good for you, Pastor. I can't do that. Well, that's fine. <laughs> Praise God. Then there is a reason that you need multicolors and different things, different days. That may be a part of your ministry. You got me? Praise God. Maybe one day I come over to your side. Maybe one day you come on my side. Maybe one day we'll meet in the middle. <laughs> Hallelujah. Next time we come back, we're going to talk more about the training of the soul and what God wants to put in your soul to perfect you and to make you better and to make you stronger. Because I'm telling you now, you're seated with Christ in heavenly places at the right hand of God. Christ is seated well above every enemy, well above every devil. The Bible says, as Jesus is, so are you in this world. I guarantee you, he's not, up, he's not up there complaining and worrying and all this stuff. We had to get on the same page with Jesus. We had to get on the same page. See, they stopped my music, so that means it's time to go. Online community, we love you. We'll see you again on the next time. Bye-bye.